Hello, my name is Rich Whitworth. I'm Content Director of The Ophthalmologist. Welcome to this interview series ahead of this year's ESCRS in partnership with Teleon Surgical. I'm joined today by Professor Thomas Conan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, perhaps we could begin by giving us a short introduction about you, your research, and the wider work of your research team. Well, first of all, my name is Thomas Kohn. I'm the chairman of the Department of Ophthalmology at the Goethe University in Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, I'm professor here and chair, as I just said. Um, my clinic is about, um, you know, 40,000 people seeing in our ambulatory surgical, sur no, ambulatory center and uh, about 12,000 interventions surgically. My research, uh, personally, my research is, um, or let's put it this way, as a chairman, we do research in all areas of ophthalmology, including cataracts, refractive glaucoma, retina, squint, everything what you can think. My personal interest is in cataract and refractive surgery and as well in glaucoma and in cornea, more, color, more cornea than in glaucoma, and also then related retinal diseases with cataract and refractive errors. You've clearly had a long and esteemed uh, career, but perhaps you could choose a few professional highlights for us. Well, that's a good question. I have published 550 articles, and that's, you know, the, I would say that uh, the development in refractive surgery from basically going from the old procedures uh, in refractive surgery like RK, which I, you know, had the pleasure to still see, uh, you know, radial keratotomy to the earlier eczema laser treatments, then the femtosecond laser treatments um, with refractive corneal surgery, then all the interventions in small incision cataract surgery, where we went from a six millimeter PMMA lens, then to foldable lenses, and then to toric, and then to presbyopia correcting intraocular lenses, is, you know, a summary of what I have done, and is that what I would think are the highlights. I think that we can help much more people now than when I started my career in terms of, you know, get them spectacle independence, um, which is, is a huge thing. I mean, it's not a, I, I wouldn't say it's a disease, but many people, you know, consider it as cumbersome. They want to get rid of glasses. If they get cataracts, they have to do something about it. If they have refractive errors which harm them, they also have to do something about or they want to do something refractive errors worldwide is still a number one cause in blindness all over the world so refractive surgery in itself is not only taking away glasses but it's also you know to help people in a way not here in the industrial world but also in the uh, you know developing countries turning our attention specifically to refractive cataract surgery um what have been the biggest changes that you've seen over the last decade and what advances do you foresee in the future? Well, I think that with the help of, um, you know, advanced technology, and I would say with diagnostics, as well as with um, uh, diagnostics, as well as with um, laser systems, intraoperative help of what we have done manually is now becoming the standard with digital work. We have digitalization in our surgical procedures, which have made the procedures more precise, more, let's say, outcome oriented. We get, we hit the nail better than we did it before. And uh, that, that is, you know, the main advantage over the uh, last decade. That also says that we also have become safer. So the complication rate has become, you know, going down and down and down because when you mo work more precisely, then you have less complications uh, in, in the surgical interventions, which are anyhow so low in cataract and refractive surgery, but still there's always something that we can do better. Thinking about the current crop of enhanced monofocal IOLs and also uh, true EDOF IOLs, how would you compare and contrast the two? Yeah, well, I think that monofocal plus lenses, in, in our regard, we do them but they don't provide what, um, uh, what a diffractive, uh, non-diffractive EDOF lens can do, for sure. Because with my monofocal uh, plus lenses, you get a little bit, you know, one line better intermediate than with a normal monofocal lens. And I have some aspheric monofocal lens, which actually perform the same like a monofocal plus lens. So I think maybe a little bit too much hype about that. They have a little bit more advantage to, let's say, a standard spheric monofocal lens. 
but they cannot achieve what an EDOF lens with the newest technology can really provide. My EDOF lenses, non-diffractive EDOF lenses, they have, first of all, good near visual acuity, distance visual acuity, intermediate, and functional near, and they have low optical phenomena, whereas the diffractive EDOF lenses have optical phenomena, and therefore I prefer the non-diffractive technologies overall in basically all my patients. Only if I cannot get access to the technology because of, you know, let's say that this lens is not going to be built for that refractive error, for that axial length, for that type of eye, then I have to go back to a diffractive EDOF maybe um, lens. But in general, I have to say non-diffractive EDOFs are bringing so much more than monofocal plus that I think they are not really comparable. Great answer. Thank you so much. Uh, final question. Um, what advances would you like to see in the multifocal IOLs of the future? I, I, I think that, you know, there, we never know what's coming in medicine, but I mean, the development in the presbyopia correcting, you know, arena has been tremendous over the last 10 years. And I think that almost, you know, the, so as I said, we never know, but, but many optical principles have been developed, which make the visual acuity much better. But I think the next big step will be an accommodative eye world, a lens here really, which can really move. Now, saying this, we still will see most likely the systems we have now, because one advantage of all our presbyopy correcting eye wells today is that when it works very well and they have less optical you know, problems, then these lenses provide a permanent solution for many, many years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And you have to find this with an accommodative eye well, you have to investigate if they last for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. We don't know that yet. Thank you so much for joining us today, Professor Conan. Uh, thank you all for watching. We hope to see you at ESCRS.